this is teacher Caroline and teacher Mary Margaret. Hello. And we are staying six feet apart, but we are out here at um, Seahurst Beach in Burien and we are going to go tide pooling um, and see what kind of cool animals we can find out here on the beach. Let's get started. Um, the reason we decided to come to this beach is because it is connected to Puget Sound and to the ocean. And ocean water does something kind of cool. It's called a tide. Um, can you say that with me? Tide? Tide. And the water, um, some parts of the day, is all the way up here where we're standing. See how the, there's all the seaweed that washed up? And then in other parts of the day, it goes very, very far out. And that's called low tide. And so at low tide, sometimes when the water goes out, it leaves animals behind in little pools of water. And so those are where we're gonna check to see what kind of animals we can find. And we will send a link that you can use to look up when low tide is because it's different every day. Sandy beaches are the best to play in, but the best places to look for animals are rocks. So we're headed to those big rocks over there um, because those, well, if you were an animal, where would you want to be? A lot of animals like the rocks because they can hide under them and feel safe. There's um, not much places to hide on a sandy beach. Yeah, and I see a lot of hungry seagulls out looking for animals too. We found a seashell that has this perfect hole in it. What kind of uh, seashell is this, Caroline? It's a again? clam, uh, but I don't know what kind of clam. There's a lot of different kinds of clams out yeah. there. But this perfect hole shows that something got to eat this delicious clam. So when you find clams that have those perfect holes, you know that they have been eaten by moon snails. Do you know what kind uh, or what body part the moon snail uses to make the hole? Radula? Yeah. <gasps> it's its tongue. Can you say radula? Radula. Radula. That's a great word. They have a sharp part on the end of their tongue and that's what they use to make that hole in the shell. Can you stick out your tongue? Can you drill a hole with your tongue? Has anyone ever seen these before? They are called barnacles. And right now they are inside and they close their little front door. Um, but when the water comes up over this, they can stick their bodies out and grab whatever food floats past them. They eat with their feet. Can you eat with your feet? Gross. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> A barnacle on another barnacle. This is like the downtown Seattle of the beach. <laughs> All the high-rise barnacles. Yeah. So we each brought a different book with us that we can use to look up some of the animals we find. This is the one I have. And I have a smaller one that I use in my, usually my back pocket. Yeah. And you won't find every animal in either of these, but you might find a close enough animal to get a better idea of what you're looking at. Ooh. Is that alive? Are you alive? Ooh, well, that shrimp is alive. <laughs> jump, shrimp, jump. I think this crab is alive too. Oh yeah, I saw its leg move. Whoop. If it's a bigger crab, you wouldn't want to pick it up. But this mm -hmm. one's small enough, it would have a hard time pinching. And I want to make sure I put it back in its home really soon. Yeah. And whenever we pick up a rock, um, we like to make sure, once we're done looking, to put the rock back. Um, because it's sort of like a roof of an animal's house. And... I don't know, I wouldn't like it if a giant picked up the roof off of my house, would you? No. No, so we want to make sure we put the roof back when we're done. And then the animals can keep hiding under there. And these things are kind of funny. Have you ever seen something like this on the beach? Oops, you found a bigger one? A lot of people think that they're trash, but actually they are eggs. What? I would never have guessed that, would you? Does this look like an egg? Not to me. Um, it's the animal called a moon snail. It lays millions of eggs and sticks them together with sand. And so that's what these are. So they're not trash. Um, and actually sometimes, just like the rocks are a good home for animals, these make a good home for other animals. And you can pick them up and see what's underneath. That's the moon snail. So that's the thing that was making the hole for all the clams. Yeah. And making all of these. I use egg collars. 
Usually they hide underneath the sand so you can't really see them. Yeah, that's part of the snail, the squishy part. Yeah. And the shell. This one did not make it. Not make it. But yeah. I bet some lucky seagull is gonna find this and get a good, get a good. Yum. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's yummy. <laughs> and I also found a sea star. Do you see it? I'm gonna gently touch it. I'm gonna get my finger wet first, um, because animals in the ocean like to stay wet and my hand can dry them off. So I'm gonna dip my finger in the water and then use my science finger to touch the sea star. Just very gently. Hi, sea star. Can you make your hands into claws? <laughs> I think it would be hard to do things with my hands with just claws. Me too. So here's something pretty cool. This is called an anemone. And these little tentacles are sort of like their fingers and they try to grab stuff out of the water as it goes past them. And when they're underwater, they look really, I think, kind of beautiful like this. Um, when they're out of the water, they look kind of silly. This is an anemone out of the water. It looks pretty different, huh? But, yep, its tentacles are inside of its body right now. You touch it. Its tentacles are a little bit sticky because that's how it grabs its food. But it can't grab onto you and stick to you. It's just a little sticky. And that animal that's orange is pretty silly. It has a pretty silly name. That is called a sea cucumber. Do you know the vegetable cucumber? I don't think that looks at all like a cucumber. But somebody decided that's what they wanted to name it. So even after... Um, an animal dies and leaves its shell behind, its shell can still be a home for something else. Uh, actually, this shell is a home for a lot of things. See, there are barnacles on the outside. And can you see the little legs? There's a hermit crab living inside the shell. Is there a hermit crab in that one? There is, yeah. Oh, that, that hermit crab has good taste. Mm -hmm. Good taste Very in shells. Fancy. Very it's stylish. It's like a whole senate of hermit crabs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow, there are. Yeah, look, it's a hermit crab party. I wonder if they're doing the thing where they all need new homes so they line up. I take. Oh my gosh, I can see that they're like, got their little teeth out. So sometimes hermit crabs outgrow their shells and have to find a new one. I wonder if those ones are trying to trade. That one looks kind of big for its shell. Hey, friends. <laughs> like, how, why am I floating in the air? Do you see all of them? There's so many. So many. And cracks in the rocks are a good spot to look. Look how many sea stars are in there. How many can you count? I count one, two, three, four. Four that I can definitely see. Plus some sea cucumbers and a crab. That is the place to be. When I first moved here, I thought our beaches were really drab and boring, but the more time I spend out on them, the more I realize how much interesting, awesome life there is. Is that a living crab? Oh, I found a little crab that's not too big. Hello. Hi, crab. Okay, I'll put you back. I can tell you don't want to be held. <laughs> I also love looking at the seaweed. Um, how many different colors and textures do you think you can find? Sometimes people ask us why there are so many dead crabs on the beach. And the answer is a little bit tricky because this looks like a, a dead crab, but it's not. It's um, called a molt. Can you say that? Molt. And just like snakes or caterpillars, um, as a crab grows, it gets too big for its shell. And it has to shake its shell off and grow a new one. And so this is the old shell that it left behind. Um, so not a dead crab. Just an exoskeleton. It's called 
a nudibranch. Nudibranch. And those are sea slugs. So, kind of like those slugs we find in the skunk cabbage, but they live in the ocean. I think they look pretty different. But I do notice they have sort of eyeball tentacles like, like land slugs do. What do you notice? can see the tide is coming back in. Um, those are the rocks we were out at earlier and the water's gonna come back and in a little while um, it's even gonna cover up the rocks entirely. The sea stars are starting to detach from the rocks so that once the water covers them up they can move around. They're covered up by the water again, and now they can eat some more food and feel safe and stretch out. And we won't see them again until there's another low tide. Alright friends, well, thanks for watching our video. Um, it was super fun making it, and uh, we love tide pooling. If you guys have questions about stuff you find, take pictures and send them to us. And we miss you so much. So I wish much. We were here with you.